we're on to a very unique wine from yes, Lake Bear Farms. Tell us about it. Well, it's unique because um, it's really a wine that can only be made in a few areas of the world. Uh, obviously, you need a very cold climate. Uh, there are certain standards that uh, those of us that are making true ice wines, not ice wines, but true ice wines, uh, try to uphold or do uphold on an annual basis. And it's a wine that we can't make every year. Um, it, to a great extent, it depends on what kind of a winter we get, especially immediately following the growing season. So what we have to start with is ripe, fully ripe and developed fruit, in our case Riesling, that's on the vine. Um, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, it's not deteriorated, it's not underripe, it is fully mature, perfect fruit for making standard wines. We have to let that fruit hang out there long enough, protected, netted, guarded from the creatures and the right. critters and the birds and everything that still wants it, and let it freeze on the vine. The fruit is then picked, frozen, and pressed frozen. So we can't bring it into the winery to press it. It has to be pressed outdoors. Oh, it has to be pressed. Like it has to be pressed under extreme pressure because you're right. pressing. And these things look like and feel like frozen, well they are frozen marbles yeah. of, of grape. Uh, I can't imagine you get a lot of juice out of a frozen no. grape. No. Where you know where you might fill a teaspoon with a grape ordinarily, you get a drop uh, from uh, from a single grape if you're lucky. And so this is, you know, we, we get roughly, we figured about 25 gallons per ton of fruit, um, where ordinarily we get about 150 gallons. So it's a significant reduction in the volume that's uh, received from the grapes. It's a big risk to the grower who has to let that fruit hang out there and try right. to protect it. Exercise restraint. <laughs> exactly. It's, um, it's a little bit of a risk to the vines because the vines are trying to shut down and they've still got fruit hanging on them. Yeah. And so, um, you know, you, you're putting some extra stress on the vine that, that you don't ordinarily have, but what you end up with when it's done and when it's good is one of the most hedonistic pleasures <laughs> that, uh, that there is in the wine world. <laughs> and is that why it's usually, uh, ice wine is usually more expensive because of the, the trials and tribulations that go into making it and the... It's the trials and tribulations, it's that volume reduction, mm -hmm. it's that risk to the grower, um, it's all of those things combined. And, you know, like I said, there are years where uh, you can't make it because you don't have the fruit that's in the kind of condition that you want to have going into the winter. Maybe, you know, you come into the winter and it's a little bit warm and then it cools off and then it warms up again. All of that warming and cooling or thawing and, and freezing deteriorates the fruit over time. So what you need is a nice gradual stair step down to freezing, to a hard freeze. Usually, most often we can get that in that first week of December, mm -hmm. where we can actually capture enough time. And we found for the volume that we produce, we need about about 72 hours okay. in order to get it picked, get it pressed, and extract the juice from it. Sounds so, cold. It is cold. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 2007 Acapella Ice Wine, all Riesling you said? 100% Riesling. Um, this is coming from two different vineyards on the Old Mission Peninsula. It carries an Old Mission Appalachian. And this is one of those wines that you want to spend time with. You want to be very intimate with uh, ice wine over a period of time. Mm -hmm. It's not something, you know, I, I, it always just, just makes me cringe when I see people shooting it back in the tasting room. And, because the wine has incredible aromatics. And as it warms, maybe in the palm of your hand, somewhat more of that aroma is released. It has beautiful fruit and texture characteristics on the palate. It has an incredible length and finish. It's one of those wines that I say to people, you know, if you buy it or you taste it in our tasting room, call me when you're down the road, when you no longer taste the wine, mm -hmm. because it just lingers and lingers and lingers. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. Obviously that sweetness plays into the viscosity and plays into that length of finish, mm -hmm. but it's one of those wines too with Riesling that still maintains a level of acidity that is just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And it sort of leaves that wine clean and crisp on the palate. And I mean, you can smell the sweetness. I mean, it's, yeah. it's almost like honey. It is. It is. Well, and when you look at it in a glass, it's really thick. Yeah. And the way that it lays in the glass. Now, typically, this is classified as a dessert wine. I would make the case that it can be dessert on its own. Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't really, you don't really need anything to go with it. Right. But if you're wrapping up a perfect meal and somebody's created the perfect dessert. 
it plays well into so many things. I mean, that acidity still works off of a richness in a dessert very well. I tend to like it with things like shortbreads or, yep. or uh, biscotti, you know, something that's still a little bit light on the palate, yep. but plays off of the richness of the fruit really well. And, and, uh, I can still take it. It's really yeah, good. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, it's one of those wines, too, that sort of um, shows itself almost throughout your palate. You know, you, I, you start to smell it after a while up in your, your nasal yeah. passages, and, and it kind of lingers a little bit in your head. It's, it's always a wine to me that is very captivating. Yeah. What's the, what do you sell this for in the tasting room? Well, this is one of those wines, the regular retail price on this is $92.50. Okay. Um, we have it on sale right now. Um, actually, I think it's, I want to say it's on sale for 75 Okay. Um, and it's one of those things that we, we made in 07. We're kind of wrapping up the 07 vintage. So this is a, um, just a kind of a vintage clearing. And, uh, and then we're going to move into a 2008. Uh, the wine is, is uh, bottle aged well. It's, um, it's mature, it's drinking really well. This is also one of those wines, however, that will age extremely well in a cellar. Uh, it's a wine, you know, I, I tend to say that our white wines will age three to five years in a good cellar. Our reds we make to age really five to ten years. This wine I think you can lay away in a good cellar and will still be drinking well in 20 years. Wow. Uh, these wines have tremendous ageability. So, you know, it's, it's expensive, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of a special occasion wine. Yeah. It's like an investment. It is like an investment. <laughs> and, and it's an investment in, in everything that's being done in, in our state and in this region, but also an investment in what you will share as an experience somewhere down the road. Yep. You know, we hear all the time from people who say, we broke this out on New Year's Eve, or we broke this out on Christmas Eve, or we broke this out at the end of Thanksgiving, you know, at a special event, a special meal. Let's talk about serving size. I mean, you buy a bottle, which is not, I mean, it's not a typical half bottle or roughly. It is at 375. Okay, so 375, about $100. What, what kind of, you know, when you're serving this as a dessert or, or with dessert, how much are you pouring for everybody? Well, for me, I love glassware. I love to be able to showcase different wines and different glasses. However, I'm also very practical. I think you can have a nice glass for just about everything that you would consume over the course of an evening. Who wants to get to the end of a nice dinner and wash 50 glasses? Yeah. However, when it comes to dessert wines like this, I think it's important to present them in glasses that still have a little bit of the tulip shape, that maybe still allow you to capture the aromatics, but you really only need to pour a half an ounce to an ounce per glass. I mean, these wines are, you know, obviously if you pull the cork on it and there's, there's enough people around, you're probably down the bottom. Mm -hmm. But to start off with, it's one of those things that I like to encourage people to just temper their tasting. Just let the wine come to them and don't think about it being something that they need to drink down right, right away. Because as I said, a great wine like this will evolve over time. Mm -hmm. So let's see what it tastes like in a half an hour. Let's mm -hmm. see what it tastes like in two hours. Um, and so you want to save a little bit to yeah. not present full glasses. Unfortunately, the tendency is I think if you pour too much, people drink. You're going to drink right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right away. You don't savor it the way you should. Yeah. Right, right. Or the way you can. Yeah. I mean, I'm also not one to say to people, you should only drink wine a certain way. Right. You know, right. Drink what you like, enjoy what you like. This has been a ton of fun. Thank you so much for the education, for tasting through the wines with us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, I just love showcasing you know, Michigan winemakers and seeing what they're doing and how everybody's doing things just a little bit different. And like I said, having you guys on the, on the podcast makes it educational for us as, as well as everybody watching. It's a lot more interesting yeah. people sick of watching us in our kitchen. <laughs> Exactly. Well, and as well, we appreciate what you guys are doing. We appreciate your interest and, and uh, appreciate you uh, reaching out to us and, and doing what it is that you do. And you do well. So keep up the good work. Thank you very Thank you. much. Right. Let us know if you've had um, any Black Star Farms wine. We know you have because they're everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Particularly, I'm interested to see if anybody's had the ice wine and what you think about it. Um, leave comments below and keep checking out MichiganBytheBottle.com where we're supporting the state with every sip.